Oh sh it's 2019, time to be topical with Mega Man 4. <laughs> Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your everyday nerd, the show where we're definitely gonna milk Mega Man throughout the entirety of 2019. I'm your host, Zack Snyder, and today's Thursday. Happy Thursday. If you're new around here, on Thursdays, it's all about that retro life. We talk about anything and everything that came before Y2K. I adored Mega Man 11. I took a stab at Mega Man 1, and I even compared Mega Man 2 and 3, but now it's time to delve into the fourth entry of the classic Mega Man franchise. Alright, so I'm just gonna say it. Mega Man 4 is better than Mega Man 3. And now it just sounds like I hate Mega Man 3, which I don't. You can go see my video about that. But Mega Man 4 is really good. With that being said, Mega Man 4 doesn't do that much new to the formula, but that doesn't mean it's a bad game. In fact, Mega Man 4 really is just Mega Man 3 with better sprite work, new robot masters, and a different, well, somewhat different story. The basics of Mega Man are still here. You're still a blue robot man that goes around eight different stages, defeats eight new robot masters, and at the end of the day defeats the evil Dr. Wily without ever arresting him so that he can just go on and do the exact same thing in the next game. I just think that Mega Man is a very confused man. He knows that he has to defeat Dr. Wily's robots in order to save the world, but when it comes down to taking out the source of all this evil, he just goes on to full-on pacifist mode and lets Wily live. Maybe he'll think Wily will have a change of heart and one day he'll own a bakery to sell cupcakes and little croissants to all the children. Meanwhile, we all know that when Mega Man 5 comes around, it's gonna be Wily again. With that being said, the story to Mega Man 4 is a little different, and it's one that I really like. For starters, the opening to this game is completely different than the last three entries. Here we have a lot of really neat sprite work. It actually gets me excited to play this game. And then you start Toad Man stage and you realize, F I wish it would stop raining, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The story to Mega Man 4 happens about a year after Mega Man 3. Everybody thought that Dr. Wily was dead, so the world ended up with like a year of peace until Dr. Light receives a message from a Russian scientist named Dr. Kosak, who is now sending eight new robot masters to destroy Mega Man just to prove that he's better than Dr. Light. So Mega Man goes and fights all the robots, eight different stages, and instead of a Dr. Wily section like previous games, we get a Dr. Kosak section with four new stages, ending in a fight with Dr. Kosak. And that's the end of the game, everybody. I'm just kidding. After we defeat Kosak, we learn through Proto Man that Dr. Wily is still alive, and he had bribed Dr. Kosak into building these new robot masters, and he did this by kidnapping Kosak's daughter and holding her for ransom. So, Dr. Wily just kind of ups the evil a little bit in this one. His daughter is luckily saved by Proto Man, but then Dr. Wily steps out and is like, Mega Man, come to my new castle. My parents aren't home. And, and I, I just, I just don't understand where he gets all this money to buy all these castles. Every new game, there's a new castle. Maybe he's using like Patreon or Kickstarter or something. I don't know. But then we have the traditional four Wily stages, which of course has the beloved the beloved boss gauntlet, and the final fight with Wily, where he escapes once again, blows up his castle once again, and that's it. Credits roll. Nothing else. That's it. On a positive note, I do like the fact that we're starting to get a little bit more depth to the Mega Man stories. The inclusion of Dr. Kosak is interesting, and I do like the fights with him. The main problem that I do have with this Mega Man game is that the weapons are kind of trash. The only difference that we do have is a charge up on our Mega Buster, which actually is nice. It's pretty good. And I'm glad that I can finally resort to using that. But it feels like it was a little bit half-baked, especially considering that there's a couple of boss weapons that you can charge, but you can't charge every boss weapon. I, I just, I just kind of wonder if they were going to be more charged abilities, but then maybe they just didn't have enough time to do that with all of them or couldn't figure out how to do it with all the boss weapons. I don't know. As far as the Robot Masters go, I do like a good bit of these. I'm just not so much a fan of their boss weapons though. The only boss weapon that I really like is Pharaoh Man's because you can charge it and get two shots out of it and it's unique. But the other weapons are just like rehashes. We have Dive Man's, which is just another missile weapon. Skull Man, which is just another shield weapon. A lot of the weapons just, like I said, they feel rehashed. 
The designs are dope though, so that's good. Sure, you can't exactly figure out which boss has each weakness because how are you gonna know the Dustman is hurt by a ring boomerang? Like, there's no logic there at all. But at least the designs are interesting. As far as the other changes to Mega Man 4, I do welcome them. There are some hidden paths in some of these levels that can get you extra lives and E-Tanks and things like that. They're usually a little bit more difficult to get through, but they're obviously worth it. This is also the first Mega Man game where you can revisit stages after you beat them. This is nice because you can get to the easiest stage and pick up extra items to get you through the rest of the game. But other than that, I was surprised by the level design because in many respects, it is better than Mega Man 3. It doesn't have as much bullshit as Mega Man 1 does, or even as much as Mega Man 3 has, which is nice, except for the beginning of Toe Man stage. I hate the f***ing rain. There's tons of little level design choices that I really like, like these hopping grasshoppers, or the floating platform thingies. I really like the boss fight from Dr. Kosak stages, where it's just a moving room. These platforms that move across spikes are pretty cool, and even these rainbow platforms. The boss fights aren't that enjoyable, unfortunately. Toe Man's fight is easy F. Like, just look at this thing. Easy as f I am also not the biggest fan of Rush Jet in this game. He was basically nerfed from his Mega Man 3 form, which you could just go wherever you wanted. Now he only goes one way and then stops at the end of the room. Pretty frustrating, but eh, whatever. At the end of the day, what's most interesting to me about Mega Man 4 is that it's not talked about as much as the first three entries. And I have a feeling that's probably because they just pumped out these Mega Man games at the beginning of the franchise and the in its life cycle, people was probably like, you know, Mega Man 3 was a good game, but I think I'm gonna move on to something different now. But the thing about Mega Man 4 is that it's a very fun Mega Man game. Arguably more fun than Mega Man 3. I still like 2 better, and more recently, Levin is probably my favorite now, but if I wanted to replay a Mega Man game in the future that's not those two, I think Mega Man 4 is a very competent contender. So if you haven't picked up this game because of franchise fatigue, which I kind of understand, pick up the Legacy Collection, play through it, I think it'll be a fun time. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. Today's episode of Your Everyday Nerd is brought to you by Awesome Creator Academy. YouTube and entrepreneurship is not easy. It's a long road of trial and error, hard work, and perseverance. But things can become easier if you get yourself into a mentorship group, and this is where Awesome Creator Academy comes in. I've personally been a part of the Awesome Creator Academy group for over a year now, and not only has it helped me be better focused and make more realistic goals, but it's put me in a place with other creative professionals that want to succeed just as much as I do. It's a place where I go to share my successes, my failures, and everything in between, and I highly recommend it. For $59 a month, you get a ton of value. You get access to private Q&A sessions with entrepreneur Roberto Blake, exclusive training videos and resource lists, early access to templates and courses, group mastermind conferences, and my personal favorite, access to a private Facebook group with people who are working just as hard as you are. Check out the details in the link below to get started, and if you do decide to sign up, you'll be helping support your everyday nerd. That's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't like it, you can hit the dislike button. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts about Mega Man 4 is, and let me know what your favorite Mega Man game is. I'll be doing more Mega Man games throughout the rest of the year, so get hyped. I'll eventually cover your favorite Mega Man at some point. Go ahead and subscribe for more Your Everyday Nerd, and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.